Hello everyone, and welcome to my survival phase 3 best in slot video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is absolute best for phase 3, and some of the differences between beast mastery and survival hunters. Afterwards, we'll take a look at when and how you can transition from tier 5 to tier 6, and then we'll take a look at items individually in each gear slot and discuss a few good pri high priority items, as well as a few good alternatives in each slot. And finally, at the end of the video, we'll go over what you should prioritize if your guild runs a wishlist or uses a website such as That's My Biss. In Phase 3, we now have access to the Armor Pen gear. One of the major differences compared to the Beast Mastery Hunters is that unfortunately, all the good Armor Pen gear is bad for Survival Hunters outside of Tier 6 and Madness of the Betrayer as it lacks a large amount of agility which is going to be crucial for your exposed weakness. One major thing I want to remind everybody is that Survival Hunters are not just a buff bot. You can do very good personal DPS while still providing excellent exposed weakness values and uptime. With that being said, we're going to start taking a look at what is Absolute Biss and for survival, there's no need to worry about swapping between 6200 and 7700 armor bosses. Starting off now for the helm, we have Grand Stalker's Helmet, socketed with a Delica Crimson Spinal and Relentless Earth Storm Diamond. For the neck, we continue to use Talonicus' Pendant. For the shoulders, we have Grand Stalker's Spalder, socketed with two Delica Crimson Spinals. For the cloak, we continue to use the Lassian's Wilder Cloak. For the chest, we use Grand Stalker's Chest Guard, socketed with one Delica Crimson Spinal and two Jagged Sea Spray Emeralds. For the bracers, we use Insidious Bands, socketed with a Delica Crimson Spinal. For the gloves, we use Grand Stalker's Gloves, socketed with a Delica Crimson Spinal. For the belt, we have Don Alondro's Money Belt, socketed with two Delica Crimson Spinals. For the legs, we use Bow Stitch Leggings, socketed with three Delica Crimson Spinals. For the boots, we use Shadow Master's Boots, socketed with two Delica Crimson Spinals. For the rings, we have Ring of Recalcitrant and Band of the Eternal Champion. For the trinkets, DST is still our best trinket for the first slot. And for our second trinket, we finally replaced Bloodless Brutes with Madness of the Betrayer. And next up, we have the main hand and offhand. Unlike with Beast Mastery Hunters, Survival are just going to use Blade of Infamy in both the main hand and offhand at all times. And finishing up with a bow, you ideally want Black Bow of the Betrayer over Bristle Blitz Striker. Let's take a look now at when and how we can transition from Tier 5 to Tier 6. There are a few ways you can go about this, and all the options will be linked in the video description below, so we won't be going over every set in detail here. There are several ways you can go about reaching two-piece tier 6 early, and that's using either the shoulders and gloves, the helm and gloves, or the helm and shoulders. The best option is the same as Beast Mastery Hunters, which is aiming for your shoulders and gloves first. The biggest difference for survival, however, compared to Beast Mastery, is that when switching from two-piece tier 6 early, is that having your sure-footed talent allows you to transition into tier 6 much easier without having to switch other pieces of gear around for hit rating. Now that we've taken a look through gear sets as a whole, Let's take a look at some gear slots individually and discuss some alternatives and important points for certain pieces. Starting with the helms, our absolute best in phase 3 is Grand Soccer Helmet. While Curse Vision of Sargeras would provide a personal DPS gain of like more or less 1, you're going to lose about 30 raid wide attack power from exposed weakness, which is not a fair trade off. This will be an incredible relief for survival hunters as Curse Vision of Sargeras is highly contested by pretty much every other physical DPS. And a few alternatives to Grand Stalker Helmet would be the Season 3 Helm or Force Prowler's Helmet. However, this does require you switching other pieces of gear around to maintain your 4 piece tier 6, which is highly not recommended as the DPS loss is quite significant. For the shoulders, we use Grand Stalker Spalders. These are one of the best pieces of tier 6 and should be used to also transition into tier 6 early. I would highly suggest you don't aim for any of the alternatives such as Shoulders of the Hidden Predator, Swift Strike Shoulders, Shoulders of Lightning Reflexes, or Beast Hammers as you're going to take a significant DPS loss both individually on the gear slot itself and having to rearrange the rest of your gear set to maintain your 4 piece tier 6. For the next, unlike Beast Mastery Hunters, Talonicus' Pendant remains absolute biss in all situations as there's no new necks available to us in phase 3 that provide the same amount of high agility and attack power combination. Until you obtain Talonicus' Pendant though, your best option is Necklace of the Deep and you're going to socket that with 2 Delica Crimson Spinals. This alternative is extremely cheap to craft, so anybody should be able to get their hands on one fairly easy. For the cloaks, survival hunters also continue to use Thalassian's Wilder Cloak in Phase 3. Just like with a neck, there are no new good upgrades to Thalassian's directly, and the only decent alternative would still be Drape of the Dark Reavers from Karazhan, or the Blood Knight War Cloak from the Badge Vendor. For the chest, there is only one good option, just like with Beast Mastery Hunters, and that is the Grand Stalker's Chest Guard. All other alternatives lack a large amount of agility, as well as requiring you to switch up your offset tier piece which would further reduce your gear set overall. This piece will be highly contested compared to a few of the other tier tokens 
as it's one of the two pieces of tier that Fury Warriors and Protection Warriors both ideally want. It is recommended that you don't swap over to tier 6 2 piece. Early with the chest, it is quite a minor upgrade compared to the other tier 6 pieces, so don't feel rushed into taking this tier token before others. Your Protection Warriors, if you had one with you, and a Fury Warrior would see an immediate use and upgrade with this tier token before you. For the wrists, we have Insidious Bands. There aren't any decent alternatives for survival hunters, so this is the pair of braces you really want as it's also one of the main pieces you're going to use as a survival hunter to reach your 3% hit cap. Until you obtain these wrists, just keep using band braces of ending as the next best option, and alternatives such as lightning reflexes, deadly cuffs, and swift strike braces really shouldn't be used or prioritized as they lack hit rating as well as taking a decent agility loss. For the gloves, there is again only one correct option, and that is the Grand Stalker's gloves. This is one of the tier pieces that is the best for survival hunters to acquire early on as it can be used to break from 4 piece tier 5 into 2 piece tier 6 early for a DPS gain. This tier token is not a high priority for Fury Warriors and Protection Warriors don't want it either, so the only competition is your shamans. There's no other decent alternatives from phase 3, so continue wearing either your tier 5 gloves or gloves of dexterous manipulation from whatever set you used in phase 2. For the belt slot we have quite a few options available. Unlike with Beast Mastery Hunters, your hit situation really shouldn't be a problem, so you can aim directly for Don Alondra's Money Belt. If you still require hit rating while transitioning into Phase 3 gear in Tier 6, you can just continue to use Belt of the Deep Shadows, and if you didn't get one in Phase 2, or you just leveled fresh in Phase 3 and needed hit, then you can aim for Bone Reef Girdle as a hit alternative. Shadow Walker's Cord and Veil Stalker Girdle are pretty bad for Survival Hunters, so I wouldn't worry about these two belts at all. For the legs, we have Bow Stitch Leggings. These provide an insanely high amount of agility, crit, and attack power, making it a no-brainer option. Your only real decent alternative would be Grand Soccer Laggings, which would be required if you went another route with your Helm slot, however the loss in overall raid benefit outweighs doing this. Both stitch Laggings are going to be contested by classes such as Enhancement Shamans and Rep Paladins, but any smart guild would be prioritizing these to your Survival Hunters first. For the boots we use Shadow Master's Boots. Again, like many other gear slots in Phase 3 for Survival Hunters, there just simply isn't anything better or anything that comes close to matching these. If you needed hit rating temporarily, you could opt for the Quick Strider Moccasins or Soft Step Boots of Tracking, as these are a decent enough alternatives, but keep in mind they will be quick contested by your Enhancement Shamans, so I wouldn't really take these from them if they needed it. For the rings, we have Ring of Recalcitrant and Band of the Eternal Champion. Luckily, Stormrage Signet Ring provides quite poor stats for survival, so this is another major item that survival hunters don't have to fight other classes for. Ring of Recalcitrant should be very easy to pick up at this point if you don't already have one, and for your second ring, Band of the Eternal Champion is a no brainer as the stats as well as the proc rate of this ring make it unmatched by anything else. A few decent alternatives to Ring of Recalcitrant would be the Ring of Lethality and Ring of Deceitful Intent. Again if you need a hit rating temporarily, these are good alternatives to use but they're not going to be your absolute best long term. For the trinkets, DST remains our first best trinket. Bloodless Brooch however is replaced by Madness of the Betrayer. This is a very powerful trinket and the only major item out of the big three, with Curse Vision and Storm Rage being the other two, that survival hunters actually need. This item alone provides nearly half of the required hit rating you're going to need for phase 3, and gear sets that don't use this trinket take a significant hit in DPS. I would also recommend putting this as a high priority item to obtain early, but until you obtain Madness, Bloodless Brutes is still going to be perfectly good and viable for you. For the bows we have three options. Crystal Blitz Striker, Legion Killer, and Black Bow of the Betrayer. There are a few things to consider when deciding which bow you want and what you should actually be aiming for. And the first thing to consider is your guild's raid up time on Judgment of Wisdom. If your paladins continuously struggle to maintain Judgment of Wisdom, then the mana drain of Black Bow would be beneficial to you. The other consideration in Black Bow's favor is speedrunning. And while this isn't going to be a massive amount of mana you gain, it'll slightly help while you're pulling fast and you don't have a chance to fully drink up, and your runes and pots are on cooldown. On top of these two factors, Black Bow the Betrayer actually sims higher than both Bristle Blitz and Legion Killer as survival, so leaving Bristle Blitz for the Beast Mastery Hunters would be the best option as you're not going to have to fight each other for which bow you want. Lastly, we have the main hand and offhand weapons to look at. This is much more simple compared to Beast Mastery Hunters as you won't have to swap around your weapons depending on whether you're fighting a 6200 or 7700 armor boss. Simply aim to acquire 2 Blade of Infamy and call it a day. Nether Bane and Claw of the Phoenix are still decent weapons to use until you get these, and some decent alternatives to Blade of Infamy are the Claw and Fist of Molten Fury, however these may be contested by other classes, so I wouldn't take them from anybody using it as a direct upgrade. The next thing we're going to take a look at is, what should I prioritize in my guild's 3 item wishlist? 
This is quite a bit easier than Beast Mastery Hunters, as you're not going to be concerned with hit cap constrictions and can easily move into tier 6 early. What I would recommend aiming for immediately and putting at the top of your list would be tier 6 shoulders, gloves, and madness of the betrayer. This is a very realistic expectation to ask for, and from there I would then extend your list to bow stick leggings, tier 6 helm, the chest, and insidious bands. This wraps up the phase 3 survival hunter best in slot video. If you found this video helpful, then please like and subscribe for more future content. My document with a ton of different gear setups and possibilities will be linked in the video description below. And if you have any further questions, or perhaps you have a gear set that you don't see in my document, by all means feel free to reach out to me, I'm always available in the Classic Hunter Discord, or you can join my Hunter Base Discord link below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.